So as I mentioned before, when I first started out, color was one of my biggest weakness when it comes to picture making. Sometimes I have a very particular feeling that I want to convey with my art, but I'm not exactly sure what those feelings look like in colors. Or sometimes I want to use one particular color very much, but not sure what other colors I can pull to support that hero color. And what really helped me personally is by browsing a lot of different kind of palette and then pulling them and just straight up stealing them and try to make that work with my own piece. And that's what you guys are going to do today as well. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we're, our dark side is not like really dark, that dark. Like even though we're stealing, we're not stealing like everything. And I think it's very important that you kind of steal from artists that works really different from you. So even if you use the exactly same palette, your work in the end will be totally different. What's more, when we uh, use their color, is usually just a foundation. We're going to build on top of that and then develop the color further to suit the piece that we're working on. So in the end, it's not going to really look like the original color palette that you start out with. So talking about stealing, there's technique to stealing as well. You can't just steal everything. Like painterly pieces are very hard to steal because the color um, shift pretty much, you know, every brushstroke or every pixel. So it's hard to really narrow down like what are the major um, six, seven colors they use. So in the beginning, it's much easier to steal when the colors are clearly separated in an image. For example, old propaganda poster or nouveau posters, or textile, or wallpaper pattern. These are all pretty easy examples to pick the colors out. There are also a lot of useful design color palettes that's around online. They just give you the swatches straight up, so you don't even need to do the hard work of color picking, which is very manually demanding. But I personally prefer to collect uh, the materials that I color steal from because I think the process of curating, you're also building your own visual library. You're also curating your own tastes and preferences. And eventually that's going to become part of your own art style as well. So I haven't always worked in digital. When I figured out that color, was my weakness. Um, the first media that I turned to was actually silk screening because you're able to pre-mix the color, test it out, and see what they look like before you commit to a palette. And you can do things in layer, which kind of translate to how I work nowadays in Photoshop. There's a lot of sim sim similarity with the layering system. Here's a pretty early piece that I did, and here's what the color palette that I stole from. And I think this piece is pretty obvious why I stole the color palette. Like I want a piece that sort of have that propaganda vibe going on and even the composition with, you know, the glowing sun and everything. Here's another one with more of a different composition, but I just really love the color palette in this poster that I try to see if I can make it work into my work, even though it shares nothing similar with composition. And the last one is more of a recent piece. And this one, I sort of want to revisit the old simplicity look of the screen printing and just really using flat colors, no gradient, and no complicated texture. And you can see on the right is the color inspiration for that. So now that we have finished making flats for all the major elements, let's uh, think about what kind of color palette we are looking for. We can always seek emotional and tonal clues from our piece. Like in mine, I feel like it's pretty soft, uh, quite feminine, and it's around springtime right now. So I was thinking about something pink, and that clue gives me a direction of my research, hunting down a color palette. So one of my favorite places to look for uh, color resources is my bookshelf. I have collected a lot of books just for the color. This is a series of books. This is one of them uh, from the V&A Museum in uh, England. It has amazing collection, just different kind of textile and different pattern. Uh, so I kind of bookmarked 
the ones that I thought could work that has the kind of like soft uh, pink that I'm looking for. Uh, this is one of them. And then this is another one. Here's is another book from the same series. Um, I thought this is a pretty cool palette. Uh, a little bit more modern maybe with the pink as well. So I looked through uh, a few more books and in the end I decided I want to make this my pattern. So this book are actually textile from Kimono. Uh, just really zoom in to show you the pattern on it. And I think this is a, a really lovely palette. So I'm going to pull that into the computer. So when you're working with analog resources, there's a few ways you can easily get it into Photoshop to pick the color out. Uh, scanning is one of them, um, or taking it with your smartphone. Everyone has a smartphone now. Make sure the color environment is good. White light, so it's not tinted with yellow. If it is off, you can always adjust it a little bit before you pick out the color in Photoshop. So I just took an image uh, with my phone and then bring it into a computer. And now I'm gonna pick out the color with the eyedropper and create swatches that I can use later. So what I'm gonna do first is I have created a new layer on top of this. And on that new layer, I'm gonna set a gray bar background so that I can see the color I picked out. I'll just pick a mid gray there and then fill it. And then have another layer on top of the gray layer. And now I can start using the eyedropper tool. So first we pick the green here, a pink, this light yellow, this white part, this gray with a blue tint, this red, And finally, this dark purple. So now we have a seven color swatches that we can bring into our work and use it. So I added the neutral color bar there just so I can see the color clearly and not being distracted by uh, this layer right here. And also I think it's an interesting exercise to kind of understand color and see how the key points we are talking about, especially color relativity, is at work. For example, here, like, the green looks a lot more vibrant because it's adjacent to a sort of complementary pink. Um, but here on the neutral gray, it starts to look a lot duller. Um, so as you can see now, I have the color palette that I just built and then I dragged it into this loosely colored flat file and I can start to apply them to the different layers keeping in mind with the hierarchy that I want the image to have and obviously like in this one I want the attention is with the lady so I think I'm gonna have the red be in her hair because that's gonna be the most attention grabbing color so this is her hair layer. I have it on layer lock. What that does essentially is locking the pixel. Notice if I don't have the layer lock and I try to fill, it just, you know, filled it everything outside or I have to really aim for it. Um, but if I have the layer lock, then I can just use short key to fill, which is odd delete to fill the foreground color. Um, that just makes the process a little bit faster for myself. And we remember that the higher contrast give you the most attention. So let's think about using a lighter color for her skin. So then we have the high contrast with the hair and her skin. So let's pick this sort of near white color with a tint of blue here. And then again, we can use a shortcut to fill it or you can simply fill it with this tool as well. And I think the shape, I sort of want the body to read as a continuous shape. And right now this 
part is breaking it up. So I'm probably gonna turn the red dress into a similar value um, with the skin color and the yellow seems like a good choice. Now let's move on to the background, which is, you know, another big, big part um, and really sort of contribute to the mood of the image. I sort of want that romantic pink feeling we have. So I'm going to grab this baby pink and then put into the background. As you can see, all of a sudden, um, the sort of light really changed in the image. So now all of a sudden it feels a lot more warm and amicable than before. And now let's also change the tree. So what we're doing here essentially is replacing all the placeholder color with one of the color from this swatches. And this is still like a rough step. So some of the color might not work like so well. Oh, see here, I didn't lock it. That was a good demonstration of what you shouldn't do. Here. Um, and you can just keep going until you have pretty much filled out all the flat that you have created. And at this point, like, don't worry too much that I feel like I'm short on color yet. We're going to expand on that. Like right now, just try to um, stick with the swatches and use all of them for all your layers of flats. You can go ahead and do what I just did, create swatches and then use the swatch apply to your layers of flats. Um, and the next step, we'll start developing those colors.